Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to Nomadic Therapy. How are you guys doing today? I just got through eating and I wasted something on my shirt. I hope the stain come out because it was some oil. So I don't know if it's going to come out, y'all. If y'all got any tips on getting oil, it was butter uh, for my shirt. Let me know. This new, so if it don't come out, y'all going to see it with a stain. I'm still going to wear it, okay? how y'all doing today happy new year's come on in thumbs up the video if you are my friend and come on at them bushes and leave some comments down below it help your girl out if you're not subscribed to my other channel vanessa's van life journey please go over there and subscribe to that channel as well and binge watch some videos over there it helps me out a lot you guys so y'all I'm back here talking about the pastor that came up short. And the reason why I'm calling him a pastor that came up short is because he was short. He was about my height or a little shorter than me. And he was supposed to be a pastor, but he was doing all this stuff. So, y'all, after the pastor did all this stuff to me, he still was trying to talk to me. He still was telling me that I was his wife. God told him that I was his wife, even though he was fooling around with different women from different churches. He was still saying that God told me, it told him that I was his wife. And I was like, God lied to you. <laughs> I was like, you ain't really listening to God anyway. So, you know, I don't know what God told you that I'm going to be your wife, but not in this life. Maybe he meant the next one, but not this one. Okay. <laughs> so he kept trying to convince me that he was, I was his wife. Uh, I had told some of my relatives, some of my relatives knew about what he had did to me and the relationship that I was in with him. So one of my cousins and his wife wanted to meet with the pastor. So the pastor was like, oh, okay, you know, he all dignified. He know the word. So he going to meet with them. But they didn't want me to be present. I'm like, how are you going to have a whole conversation about me? But you don't want me to be present. So they didn't want me to be present. So they had a conversation with the man. <laughs> he didn't like it. After it was over with, oh, Lord, he couldn't stand. <laughs> he couldn't stand my cousin and his wife. <laughs> he did not like them. He did not like them people, y'all. Because, of course, they told him the word of God and they was telling him, man, you a preacher. Did she young? She dumb and she stupid and she don't know no better. But you is in your 40s. You are head pastor of a church. You supposed to be living right. You supposed to be leading your flock. You ain't supposed to be leading people astray. Girl, he didn't want to hear none of that. So he didn't like that. We broke up. And like I said in the last video, he paid the bill. It was a garden's jeweler's bill. He finally paid the bill off. Uh, the church, the other church affiliates made him sit down as pastor for a certain time frame and the, uh, assistant pastor ran the church. I think because of his unholiness and his unorthodox unorth living, he felt like he was forced to get married. So he kept asking me to marry him. And I was like, no. He kept saying, God told me, you my wife. And I kept saying, no. And so he went found somebody and he got married. Now, mind you, when I first met him, he had only been married once. Okay, this story gets juicy and it's going to be a lot of parts to this story. So he gets married to this lady. But he's still running into my family members. He knew where my grandmother lived at. He's still running into people I know and saying, where's Vanessa? How Vanessa doing? Tell her I love her. Tell her I want to marry her. How a man that's married want to marry somebody that's married? Y'all tell me that. So in the meantime, in the between time, I can't even keep up. This man gets a divorce. 
he getting ready to get married again. One day I get a phone call. I'm like, hello. He's like, hey, Vanessa, how you doing? I'm like, fine. And he like, uh, I ain't heard from you in a long time. I like, uh, how you get my number? And oh, I, I, he got my number, y'all. Well, I was just calling to let you know I'm getting married today. I'm like, congratulations. Ooh, you is out of my hair. You going to be off the market. Praise the Lord. You can leave me alone. Wrong. It's always a catch-22 to a con artist. <laughs> I'm going to call him a con artist. So he say, well, yeah, I'm getting married today, Vanessa, but if you say you will marry me, I won't get married. I'm like, don't marry that lady. You don't love her. Well, are you going to marry me? Hell no. <laughs> well, I'm going to go and get married. Bye. Oh, I wouldn't want to be on the flip side of that coin. I wouldn't want to wake up to you every day. And you would have just called another woman on our wedding day and told her you about to get married, but you won't marry the lady that you about to stand in the front of God and say you love, but you won't marry her if the other woman that you won't say yeah. See, ladies, let me tell y'all something. Sometimes y'all be thinking y'all get got a catch. Sometimes y'all be boasting, ooh, I got a good man. And if you only knew, if you only talk to the other woman that he really want to marry, he only marry you see men. Y'all, I'm trying to tell y'all. Men have an agenda. Men have the woman he want and the woman he marry. That's two different things. Very seldom is that one woman. Can I get you to say that with me in the comments? Men have the woman they want, that they can't have, that don't want them back. And then they got the woman that they marry that'll settle for if any of them. have the woman that he won't, he would have never had to marry the woman that he marries. And that's why that marriage don't last long because he is not as committed to the woman he married as he would be to the woman he won't. Story goes on. So this, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> I want to call him <laughs> something. Oh, he's not a hero, but he's... <laughs> Put an in where the H is. <laughs> this man gets married to this woman. I can't even keep up, y'all. Years pass by, years go on. I don't see the man. He's still running into my family members, still telling them I love him. So one day, my son is at some people's house, and they order pizza. And my son, he a teenager. He goes to the door. Lo and behold, the man that I used to date is delivering pizza. He got a side hustle and he delivering pizza. So he recognizes my son or my son recognized him. They start talking. He tell my son to tell me to call him. He building a two-story house in a nice, I ain't going to dox the side of town, y'all. In one of the nicest areas in Houston, he was building a, a two-story house. Tell your mama to call me. So my, mom, my son called me, mama. Mr. Such and such and such and such told me to tell you he looking for you and he building us a two-story home. How you building me a two-story home and you ain't heard from me in 15 years? And I was like, 
Uh, I ain't calling that man and my son. Like, mama, I think you should call him. He's a nice man. I say, well, you date him. <laughs> Hey y'all, my son, he had this little thing. When I tell him something stupid, he say, mm? <laughs> When I tell him something stupid, he say, mm? <laughs> He say, he's a nice man, mama. I like him. I say, well, you date him. He tell me, mm? <laughs> End of story. So he, he ran into... My son, telling my son to tell me to call him. He building the two-story house. Then he he runs into my cousin's wife, the one he don't like. <laughs> he tell my cousin wife, how's Vanessa doing? And she was like, well, he's still looking for you, girl. I'm like, well, he could keep looking. I'm glad I don't never run into him. I didn't live on the side of town where he lived at. So, one day, I'm on my other side of town. I think this man was stalking me, y'all. I think he was a stalker. I'm on another side of town. Maybe one day he watched me at one of my relatives' house and followed me home. I don't know. I'm at my relative's side of town. I'm, I'm uh, Follow me from my relative's side of town. I'm at my house on another side of town. And one day, I'm coming down my stairs. And across the street is some more apartments. And the gate to exit the apartments are facing my stairs. So I'm coming down my stairs, getting ready to go to my car. It's a car come out the gate on the other side, blowing, pulling over to the curb. Vanessa, Vanessa, Vanessa. Girl. It's the little pastor that could if he would. <laughs> oh, I'm like, how you doing? How you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm married now. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Well, how you been doing? How you love? Why you married? Why you worried about my love life? Can I give you my phone number? No, then you just tell me you married. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. So one day I'm on the other side of town where my family live in and I'm driving down the road. I got tunnel vision when I'm driving, y'all. You know, I, I'm driving down the road and apparently this car is behind me, following me, blowing, 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 blowing. I don't hear it. I don't see it. I don't know what's going on. And so... Finally, this car gets over on the side of me and say, pull over. <laughs> y'all, this is funny. I promise y'all, I ain't making none of this up. I promise you. Oh, they say, pull over. <laughs> I pull over. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Girl, little short preacher, get out the car. Hey, Vanessa, how you doing? Where you been? I'm like, uh, I'm doing fine. Uh, is there something wrong? Why are you blowing me down? I've been looking for you everywhere. I'm like, you've been looking for me everywhere. Why? You, I done talked to you five years ago. You was getting married. Six years ago, you called me and told you me you was getting married on your wedding day and told me you wouldn't marry the lady if I said yes. I mean, how many times, I'm like, sir, how many times have you been married since the last time I broke up with you? Y'all is not going to believe this. Y'all not going to believe this. Yeah, I, I, I can't make this stuff up. This man that been married a total of seven times <laughs> from the time I broke up with him, he was only married once. When I met him and him and his wife got a divorce. Now he has been married six more times in probably a 15, 20 year span. And he's still trying to hunt me down, trying to get with me. 
My son was a little boy when we met. My son, a grown man now. This man is still trying to get with me. Running me down over on the road. So then we in a parking lot of this service station. And he telling me, God told him years ago, I was supposed to be his wife. I'm being, dis he tells me, you are being disobedient. You are the reason. This is what the man goes on to tell me. He say, you are the reason why I have married all of these women. You are the reason why I'm in sin and not right with God. It's your fault. <laughs> Woo. It's my fault. You've been married six times. He said, yes. I say, it's my fault. Now, he can't get married no more in the state of Texas. If he want to get married again to somebody else, he have to go to another state. I say, so it's my fault that you keep misleading these women, making them think that they are the one when you are actually in love with somebody else and want to marry somebody else. And you actually walk your little short butt down the aisle and say, I do, when you know you don't. You don't love her. You don't want her. But you're going to walk down the aisle and say, I do. And it's my fault? Girl, the, if that ain't more indication that you ain't the man for me, I told that man, I say, sir, please go on with your life. I am not your wife. If you saying that God told me, you, that I'm your wife, he lied to you. Don't And God say he don't lie. I don't so know I don't who I say. And if God told you, that I was your wife, then that means if you believe with uh, out, out a shadow of a doubt that I was your wife from day one before you married all these other six women, then God is calling you to stay single, stay celibate, and stay faithful to what you say he told you. If God told you somebody, your wife or your husband, then that means you stay single. That don't mean you get married. Make that make sense. Pastor? <laughs> I was like, what in the devil is this? Girl, Lord have mercy. Mr. Pastor had the audacity to quote scriptures to me, tell me that God said I was his wife. I say, well, you need to go tell God to talk to me and tell me. Because you done been married six times since the last time I met you. Sir, if you, you married to all them other women, in the spiritual realm, you married to all them other women and you think I want you? You was old and rusty and crusty when I met you when I was 19 or 20 or 21 years old. Now you in your sadness? <laughs> oh, oh, so I'm 55, y'all. He was like, 20, 25 years older than me. So I'm 55. If he's still alive, I don't even know if homeboy's still alive. If he's still alive, that will make him what? That will make him 75 or 80? I, you think I want you? I don't want you, homie. I don't want you. No way, Jose. So y'all, that's the end of part... <laughs> <laughs> y'all this funny <laughs> i promise to god i can't make this up oh lord have mercy y'all i done been through so much in life till it is funny now it's funny i done been through so much in life i made it i made it that man beat me up, tried to throw me out of a moving car, tried to make me marry him, been stalking me for years. Everywhere I go, I see him, and that ain't just happening. I made it through all of that, and baby, you got to laugh about it when you made it through it, unless you you gonna cry about it. You got the you got to laugh about it. I laugh about this stuff now because I was so dumb. I was so young. 
dumb and stupid and green. My mama didn't teach me nothing. My aunties didn't teach me nothing. Nobody taught me nothing about men and be aware of me. I had to learn all this stuff the hard way. And believe me, it took about 20, 30 years. Nah, I got it. <laughs> nah, I got it. I got it, baby. I got... You know, I, I would have failed for everything that man wanted me to fall for had I not had wisdom, had I not sought a proper relationship with God, had I not failed for another human being telling me God said you're supposed to be my wife just because a man pick you and say you supposed to be my wife don't mean you have to say yes you got to have a spirit of discernment baby and i could tell you nine times out of ten if a man hit you once he's he wants he is gonna hit you again and when a man can't take no for an answer i could see if the man was saying you know what vanessa god told me you are my wife I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to supplicate and ask God to change your mind. I'm going to fast. And if it takes 50 years for you to come to your senses, I'm still going to be here waiting on you. Now, that is a man saying, God told me you're supposed to be my wife. If God told you something, what you do? You wait on the Lord. You wait on the Lord. If God told you something, you wait on him. You pray, you supplicate, you fast. You don't go get married. If you, if God told you I'm your wife and I said I ain't and you believe God, don't listen to what I say, listen to God and you go pray and supplicate and tell God to change my mind. Maybe he will one day when I'm 76 years old. <laughs> Y'all tell me if I'm right. Tell me if I'm right, y'all. I'm through with part three, y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I hope y'all got a good laugh out of this. It's the truth. I promise to God and shame the devil. And if you're not subscribed to Vanessa's Van Life Journey, please go over there and subscribe to that channel. I have some story times over there too. I'm like switching them up and dividing them up. I got some more story times coming, y'all. I got a lifetime of story times. I'm going to be on Lifetime Movie Show one day. I'm going to write my own book one day. I'm going to be Tyler Perry Vanessa. No, I don't like Tyler Perry, but I'm going to be Vanessa Perry. <laughs> If y'all want to support the channel in any shape, form, or fashion, it's multiple ways to do it. You can become a member. You can click that little button up under the video that say thanks. You can cash out me. You can PayPal me. You can buy something off of my Amazon wish list. Like, I need help. However you want to help me. Prayer, watching the videos, thumbsing up the videos, commenting. It's all help, baby. So I will talk to y'all later. Thanks for watching. Bye now. <laughs> That was funny, y'all. That was fun. I like these stories. <laughs> I like these story times, y'all. And they get better. <laughs>
could sit here all day, you guys. Beautiful. Say hey. Say hey. you doing, Vanessa? Watching God.